Well, we've come to the last chapter of the book of Acts and Paul's just been shipwrecked on the island of Malta. It's, it's interesting to me how the Lord uses things that go wrong and turns them into things that go right. <laughs> we'll get to that, but let us read. When we had escaped, then they learned that the island was called Malta. The natives showed us uncommon kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us all, because of the present rain and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. When the natives saw that the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he has escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. However, he shook off the creature into the fire and was, and wasn't harmed. But they expected that he would have swollen or fallen down dead, but when they watched for a long time and saw nothing bad happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. <laughs> now in the neighbourhood of that place were lands belonging to the chief man of the island named Publius, who received us and courteously entertained us for three days. The father of Publius lay sick of fever and dysentery, Paul entered into him, prayed and laying his hands on him, healed him. Then when this was done, the rest of all who had diseases in the island came and were cured. They also honoured us with many honours, and when we sailed, they put on board the things that we needed. After three months, we set sail in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the island, whose sign was the Twin Brothers. Touching at Syracuse, we stayed there three days. From there, we circled around and arrived at Regium, after one day, a south wind sprang up, and on the second day we came to Puteoli, where we found brothers, and were entreated to stay with them for seven days. And so we came to Rome. From there, the brothers, when they heard of us, came to meet us as far as the market of Appius and the three taverns. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. When we entered into Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier who guarded him. After three days, Paul called together those who were the leaders of the Jews. When they had come together, he said to them, I, brothers, though I had done nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, still was delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, desired to set me free, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was constrained to appeal to Caesar, not that I had anything about which to accuse my nation. For this cause, therefore, I ask to see you and speak with you, for because of the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. They said to him, We neither received letters from Judea concerning you, nor did any of the brothers come here and report or speak any evil of you. But we desire to hear from you what you think. For as concerning this sect, it is known to us that everywhere it is spoken against. When they had appointed him a day, Many came to him at his lodging. He explained to them, testifying about God's kingdom and persuading them concerning Jesus, both from the law and from the prophets from morning until evening. Some believed the things which were spoken and some disbelieved. When they didn't agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had spoken one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers saying, go to this people and say, in hearing you will hear, but in no way understand. In seeing you will see, but will in no way perceive. For this people's heart has grown callous, their eyes are dull of hearing, their, their ears are dull of hearing, their eyes have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and would turn again, and I would heal them. Be it known therefore to you that the salvation of God is sent to the nations, and they will listen. When he had said these words, the Jews departed, having a great dispute among themselves. Paul stayed two whole years in his own rented house and received all who were coming to him, preaching God's kingdom and teaching the things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness, without hindrance. Okay, lots of things in this chapter. They land on the island and find out it's called Malta. Some versions of the Bible say Melita. It's the same place, just variant names. Paul then, um, you know, gets bitten by a snake. <laughs> and they think 
oh, he must be a murderer. You know, justice won't allow him to live. You know, he, you know, he escaped the sea, but you know, he's going to die anyway. But in um, the end of Mark's gospel, uh, it says there's that. Uh, People who, you know, in the end of Mark's gospel, it, it talks about the things that those who followed Jesus would do. It said they would cast out demons. They would heal the sick. It said they would handle poisonous snakes. And, uh, well, here we have an example of it. <laughs> Acts chapter 28, Paul does the very thing that's mentioned in Mark chapter 16. If you're ever bitten by a snake you, and, and you're a believer, what I would immediately do is say, Lord, I would immediately say to the Lord, um, Lord, you said in Mark chapter 16 that snakes would not harm us. Now, those snakes, could it could be metaphorical for like the demonic. You know, no scheme of the devil will harm you, but it could also be an actual snake. So I would say to the Lord, Lord, you said in the Bible, no snake will harm me. And then I would also call emergency services at the exact same time. So my approach is always to do both to do the medical thing and to do the faith thing as well. <laughs> and um, so uh, we had a, a man in the church here who was bitten by a snake and um, he didn't have his own mobile phone. So he used his house phone. He was, he was living on a property and he was bitten by a snake and he was the only one there, bitten by a snake on the foot. He uses his house phone to call his wife. His wife doesn't um, get that get it, so he leaves a message, and then he calls the ambulance and goes off to hospital. But we didn't know what hospital he went to, and he didn't have a mobile phone, so we couldn't contact him and find out. So all these hours, they're worrying about him. His wife was really worrying. And um, so we're praying, oh Lord. <laughs> and then we find out later that it was nothing. And, and I think what happened was the Lord heard our prayers and uh, delivered him just like Paul in this chapter. I think it's very, very cool. So I think Paul is trying to get to Rome, but he's shipwrecked. Now, you would have thought that this is a terrible disaster, well, because it is. The ship is lost. The ship is destroyed. Um, the cargo is lost. Financially, it's a disaster. They're, they're, now they're not at Rome. Now they're stuck on the island of Malta. Um, you know, how are they going to get to Rome? You know, there's any number of questions, complexities, problems. You would think that this is all unfolded wrong. But the result of this is that Paul preaches the gospel in Malta. He heals the father-in-law of the chief, of, chief island person, Publius. We find out later, I looked it up, we find out later that Publius becomes the first Christian leader of Malta, the first bishop. Christianity has been non-stop in Malta for 2,000 years. <laughs> As a tourist, you can go to St. Paul's Island. You can go to the spot where Paul, where the ship landed and you can stand there. There's a statue to Paul. There are museums to this very day. There are church services. It's one of the most Christian parts of Europe. 90% of people are Christian. You know what? It might have been a disaster as a result of that disaster, the gospel came to Malta. If you're having a disaster in your life, the Lord can turn it around. Now, you might want him to turn it around your way, but he might be turning it around his way. <laughs> and uh, so whatever goes wrong, say, Lord, how do you want to use this situation for your glory? Years ago, we had a preacher that came to church from North America, and he talked about pie, P-I-E, pauses, interruptions, and expectations. I, I've never forgotten. And um, he, he had all these stories of things that went wrong, you know, like where you're trying to do something, but you're like, your plans are paused, or your plans are interrupted, or your expectations are not fulfilled. Like, that's where you got the P-I-E from. But in all of his stories, you know, the Lord worked out some wonderful thing. And um, so, and all of history is full of this type of thing. You know, slaves are captured and from Africa, taken to North America, they become North American slaves, but there they hear the gospel. So that's a terrible thing, but there they hear the gospel and then they have gospel music. And now that gospel music goes all out through the whole world and churches everywhere have been blessed by their gospel music. 
So it's a terrible disaster, but the Lord turns it into a huge blessing. <laughs> the Lord is so good at turning disasters into blessings. So if you're going through a disaster, say to the Lord, Lord, what's your plan? How do you want to use me? And Paul got about the business of, well, he never knew he was going to Malta, but next thing, there's a church and there's a bishop, Publius, and the gospel is established and it's there to this day. Super cool. <laughs> so then he finally gets to Rome and he does the same. He calls the Jews to come and listen. He preaches to them. The same thing happens that happens everywhere. Some believe, but most don't. There's a division and a split. And um, he has the same response, but at least he's finally declared his testimony in Rome as the Lord said he would. And then the book of Acts just finishes like that. You know, we kind of feel like, I kind of feel like there should be some proper conclusion to the book of Acts. Something like, and thus ends the story of Paul, or, you know, something like that. But it just stops by saying Paul preached for two years um, in his rented house, the kingdom of God. Bang, stopped. Well, um, it, it seems a bit abrupt. Well, I have some thoughts about this. My first thought is that we know that Paul was, was released by Nero. Nero was the emperor. And then he went off preaching more in more places and then he ends up coming back to Rome and he ends up being killed by Nero in around about 64 AD or so. When he gets to Rome, it's 60. He's there for two years. So the book of Acts finish, the book of Acts finishes, the reporting of it finishes at about 62, but for, Paul dies at about 64. So we can tell from this ending that the book of Acts is written somewhere between 62 and 64 because Luke doesn't know that Paul is dead. When he writes this, he doesn't say, Paul preached for two years and then he went traveling and then he came back and then he was killed. He doesn't say any of that. He doesn't know that information. So this funny, unusual ending helps us to date the book of Acts. And um, I said before that I thought that the book of Luke was written in that 58 to 60 period because that's when Luke was in, that's when Paul was in prison in Caesarea for two years. So I think that this funny ending and the few chapters before help us work out that Luke has written 58 to 60 and Acts is written around about 62 to 64. These two books are written in this period. And that is very, very cool because that gives us an early date for Matthew and Mark, which are written before this. And it gives us, it also shows us that the prophecies of Jesus about things like the destruction of Jerusalem were actually prophesied before Jerusalem fell because when these things were all written, Jerusalem hadn't fallen yet. So all of this is really, really cool. Paul ended up coming back to Rome in 64 and in he's put in prison in the Marmotine prison. My father, John Alley, has been there, been to see it. And I'd like to go one day too. Perhaps one day I will have that opportunity. And... Um, in the Marmotine prison, Paul wrote the, sec the letter of 2 Timothy. In, in that he, he said, I have fought the good fight, I've run the good race, and he knows he's about to die. But the second last letter, or at least a lot of people think it's his second last letter, is the letter of Titus. And in the letter of Titus, he writes, in Titus um, 1.5, he says, the reason I left you on Crete is that you might establish elders in the churches. So we find out that in around about 64 AD, Paul left Titus on Crete. You know what that means? It means that after 62, after the book of Acts chapter 28, Paul goes on at least one more missionary journey and he goes to Crete. And maybe he goes to Spain as well because we know that he wanted to go to Spain. So there's some journeys and things that Paul does that we don't know about. Uh, not everything that Luke writes is written in the book of Acts. And the last part of, of Paul's life is not recorded in the book of Acts. So Paul has three missionary journeys, but we know he has at least a fourth. He may even have a fifth. We know he has four shipwrecks. We don't know the details of three of those. And Paul ends up dying by the sword in about 64 or maybe 65 at the hand of Nero. 
So the book of Acts, it's, it's one of the most historical books in the Bible. Luke really researched even the titles of people in various positions, you know, um, in Ephesus, the leaders of Ephesus were called Asiarchs. Like he's got titles and all sorts of uh, legal words and all things are, are really well researched. I remembered someone saying that in Acts chapter 27, you know, the description of the, sh the sailing and the shipwreck was one of the most detailed stories of a, of a sailing journey in all of ancient Roman literature. Well, we have it from Luke from the, in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is super cool and super interesting, but sometimes you might, um, but it finishes so abruptly in Acts chapter 28 without like a decent ending. And here is my thought on that. <laughs> I think, as do many, that the book of Acts never really finished because we are living in Acts chapter 29. You know, the Holy Spirit didn't just work through the early questions and then that was it. The Holy Spirit continues to work today. And um, so Acts chapter 29 is all the years uh, from, you know, from when Paul was preaching until today. You're living Acts chapter 29, your life, your prayers, your service. It's Acts chapter 29. <laughs> and I think that is super cool. Father, thank you for the book of Acts. Thank you for all the wonderful things you did through the apostles and through the, the early believers. And I thank you, you're still doing wonderful things through your people today. And I pray, Lord, that you would use us to do wonderful things. Amen.